Now we are going to perform a logistic regression on this data set. The main distinction between a multiple regression in the previous video and logistic regression in this video is that with multiple regression, the dependent variable or the thing that you are trying to predict has multiple different values like what we saw with quality. Whereas with a logistic regression, you are trying to predict a value or a variable that takes on only two values. Those can be true or false. Those can be uh, present or absent, let's say for a disease. Those can be pass or fail for an exam. Maybe it's uh, get the mortgage or don't get the mortgage for yeah, predicting uh, some financial things. But, uh, but with logistic regression, you're always predicting uh, one of two values. So what you want to do to start with uh, this video is to first binarize the quality variable. So remember, quality went from three through eight, and you wanna come up with a new variable, a new column in this data set, and I call it bin quality for binarized quality or binary quality. And it's ever, it's only, it only takes on the values false or true. And it's going to be false if it's below the mean of the quality ratings. And if it's going to be true if it's above the mean. So you have to compute the mean of all of these values. And then any value that's below the mean, that's going to be false. Any value that's above the mean is going to be true. So here's just that distribution again to remind you. Now it's no surprise that the mean is going to be somewhere around 5.5, certainly gonna be between five and six. Then the next thing you want to do is run a logistic regression. Um, and, but now this is called a logit regression. So L-O-G-I-T, instead of a uh, multiple regression that we ran in the previous video that's called a logit regression. And there's a couple of different methods for fitting a logistic regression. In this case, I used the Newton method. So you have to figure out how to define the method that is used to fit the model, and I called the Newton method. Okay, now again, you need to uh, separate two different data frames, two different pandas data frames, one that contains all of the predictor variables and one that contains only the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is bin quality, binarized quality, and the dependent, independent variables are all the other columns except for these two. Now, in the previous video, we used the method drop. We used data.drop to remove all of, uh, to remove this one column here so we can keep all of these columns here. If you are up for a little bit of a challenge here, I would like you to figure out a different way to achieve the same thing. So you wanna get a data set that contains all of these columns except for quality and bin quality, and do not use the method dot drop. Now there's nothing wrong with dot drop, of course, that will also work here, but you know, it's, it's useful to know how to achieve the same results using different methods in Python. Okay, so once you've run the model, you've set up the model, you've run the model, you will get a table that looks uh, quite similar to the table that we saw for the multiple regression. I don't know why it prints it out a little bit nicer uh, in different font, but uh, it is what it is. And again, you want to grab all of the columns that are all the predictors that are statistically significant. So P less than 0.05. And then you wanna produce a, uh, a bit of text that looks something like this. So these are the uh, significant predictors from the standard regression. That's from the previous video. And these are the significant predictors from the logistic regression. That's from this video. And then, you know, you can just kind of inspect what predictors are the same and uh, which ones are, uh, are significant in one regression model and not in the other regression model. So those are your tasks for this video. Good luck, enjoy working through this one. And now I'm gonna to switch to Python and get started. So let's start by creating a threshold that we can use to binarize the data. So I'm gonna call this variable bin thresh equals, and this is actually pretty straightforward, it's just the average of the data quality measures. So let's see what that bin thresh variable is. Based on everything we know about this data over you know, the past hour of working on this data, we already know that it's gonna be somewhere around five and a half. 
So it's a little bit over five and a half. So now we want to use this threshold to say uh, data quality greater than the threshold. And that's going to give us a bunch of trues and falses, a bunch of Boolean results. And now what we want to do is add a new column into the data frame, the data pandas data frame that contains these Boolean values, so false and true. So let's say data binarized quality equals this. So it's it's really that simple in uh, in pandas to come up with a new uh, column in the data frame. Now when you do this, you're going to get a little bit of a warning about a copy uh, of a, a slice from a data frame. So we're we're copying uh, from we're defining one column based on a manipulation of an, a different column, but you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't actually affect us. Okay, so here we see the quality ratings and the binarized quality ratings. So falses for below the mean and trues for above the mean. The next step before computing the uh, logistic regression model is to create another data frame that contains all of these columns here and not these two columns here. And we want to do this without using uh, dot drop, that dot drop method. And so the way that I'm going to do this is uh, loop through all of the all of the column names. So for key in data dot keys, and let's just start by we're going to do this one step at a time. So print all of the keys. So in fact, we want to keep all of these except for the last two. Now you know you could sort of do this in a loop and say just exclude the last two, but uh, that's not really a good way to do it. It's not a scalable way to do it because we don't necessarily know, it's not guaranteed that the dependent variable is going to be in the last two columns. Plus, what if we want to change the analysis to look at, you know, what predicts residual sugar uh, or what predicts the amount of alcohol, something like that. Okay, so what I am going to do is add an if statement here. So I'm going to say if key is not in this list. So if it's not in the list quality or binarized quality, then we print it out. And that is going to print out all of these columns and not it's not going to print out quality or binarized quality because those are contained in the list. And just to make sure that this is crystal clear, I'm going to delete not. And now we are saying if the key is in this list, then we print it. And that's going to give us the other two, which in fact we are uh, not interested in. Okay, now I don't just want to print this out. I want to actually uh, generate uh, a list from here uh, that I can use as uh, columns for, a, uh, for, for creating the next data set. Okay, so I'm going to call this um, X calls because this is going to be X, you know, at the capital X is often used in statistics for the design matrix or the, the matrix that contains all of the independent variables. So let's say uh, X calls dot append key. Okay, now this is going to crash here because uh, this thing doesn't yet exist. We're trying to append onto a list that isn't yet defined. Okay, there you go. I don't know why this system hung for a minute. Uh, so let's see. So we want x calls equals empty, and then let's print this out again at the end just to make sure that we are really getting the right thing. Now, I did this here in a uh, for loop with an if statement. If you like, if you want an even uh, little extra challenge, you could figure out how to do basically all of, uh, let's see, all of these four lines of code you could actually do with a list comprehension, which I'm not going to do right now, but uh, but it would be a nice thing for you to challenge yourself to to make sure that uh, you really get some more experience working with list comprehensions. All right, so I'm going to set up the model like I did in the previous video. So this is MSM uh, for stats module. And now uh, previously we used a multiple regression. Now I'm going to use a logit for logistic regression. And now also in the previous video, I separately created the two data frames, the two data sets for the dependent variable and the independent variable. Here, I'm, I'm not going to leave those as separate uh, data frames. I'm going to just create them on the fly 
directly in the input to this sm.logit function. So the first one is the dependent variable that is data quality. Uh, oops, it's actually not quality. It is bin quality, binarized quality. And now we need another data frame, and that's going to be the, the original data frame, but only these columns. So we want data x calls, just like this. Okay, and now I'm just going to expand this uh, into another line. So in the previous video, I said immediately uh, dot fit like this. But now I'm going to say results equals model dot fit. And then the method, as I mentioned in the video, is equal to Newton. And essentially, uh, this is because um, for a multiple regression, we can just, there, there's a closed form solution. There's one formula that we apply that gives us the result to a multiple regression. With logistic regression, it's a little bit harder. There's no um, single closed form analytic solution. So you cannot just write out the solution with a mathematical formula. Instead, you need to go through an iterative procedure to uh, arrive uh, slowly at a good solution. And then there's several methods for iterating through and coming up with a better and better fit to the data. And one of those methods is called the Newton method. Okay, anyway, so then we do results.summary. And this is going to give us our nice summary table. So you can see this went through six iterations. So it had to run through this model six times to, uh, to, to find a good solution. Okay, but anyway, what we are primarily interested in is the variables here, the predictors, the data features that are significantly predictive of the binarized quality threshold. Now, fortunately, the way that we go about uh, achieving that is essentially the same as what we did in the previous video. So we want to find the p-values that are uh, less than, let's see, results, uh, p-vals less than 0.05. And then we want to grab the keys out of this result, which is, uh, oops, yeah, it's called p-values not p-vals, p-values, like this. Okay, so then we get uh, these results, and then these are the keys. We want to uh, convert this into a list, and this gives us the significant uh, column. So uh, previously, in the previous video, I called the output of this uh, operation sig calls, but I still want to access sig calls, so I'm going to call this sig calls l. Okay, so there you go. So now, for printing this out, I will use the same list comprehension that I did previously. So that was something like print i for i in sig calls l, like this. And so that works. But I also had some other text that I showed in the slide. So that was something like uh, significant uh, predictors from the logistic regression. And then it's nice to add a little bit of space in here. So how are we, you know, to separate the, the this um, title from all of these individual elements. So how can we add a space to the beginning of these uh, items here? Well, these items come from this statement here, print. So what I'm going to do is just add a couple of spaces. So space space plus i. And these are already strings, so we don't need to worry about converting them to strings, we can just immediately concatenate them with the plus sign. Okay, so this looks good. And then, let's see, I'm going to uh, print out another space. That's just to give a little bit of separation between uh, this one and the, uh, the, the regular regression. I'll call this the standard regression. Okay, and then this is almost correct, except that now we have from the standard correct, uh, regression, we still have quality in here. And why do we have quality in here? That was because you remember to create that big pair plot, that huge seven by seven grid of plots. I added, I appended onto this column, the quality uh, variable so that we or label so that we would be able to access it in the plot for changing the colors. So in fact, now I'm going to write all to minus one. Okay, so this tells us 
what are the variables that were significant predictors in the standard regression and in the logistic regression. Now, it's an interesting discussion of why some of these variables are, are significant here and not here. And uh, that discussion has to do a little bit more with getting deeper into uh, regression. But the simple way that you could uh, think about this is that if you see the variables significance for multiple different ways of doing the analyses, then those variables are, you can have more confidence that those are really, you know, meaningfully related to quality because they keep showing up regardless of how you do the analysis. And if you change the analysis and then some of the variables drop out, uh, there, there could be different reasons for that. But generally, the way to interpret it is you, sh you can have less confidence that, uh, that pH is significantly related to quality, given that it only shows up for some analyses and not for others. Anyway, this was a really great video. I hope you feel good about your improvement in your Python knowledge from this video and all the other videos in the section. Next up is a bonus video. That one's going to be really fun, so stay tuned.